Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning how to solve trinomial equations, polynomial equations rather, in the form of x squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, to factor trinomials in the form of x squared plus bx plus c, we need to follow the three steps listed on the screen. Number one, we need to list the factor pairs of c. Whatever this number is, whether it's positive or negative, we're going to list the factor pairs. So the numbers that multiply to get that value. Step two, determine which factor pair of C, so what numbers multiply to get C, that have a sum of B. Let's say we found those numbers, the two numbers that multiply to get C, and they add up to get B. We're going to call them M and P. We're going to use M and P to write the factored form of the trinomial as x plus m, x plus p. For example, x squared plus 7x plus 12. Here is my value for c, 12. To get a positive 12 and to have them add up to a positive number, both factors of 12 would need to be positive. Factors of 12 would be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. These are the numbers that multiply to get 12. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. Both would have to be positive. I need to select the factor pair that, add, that multiplies to get 12, but adds up to get 7. 1 and 12 add up to get 13. 2 and 6 add up to get 8. But 3 and 4 add up to get 7. 3 is my m, 4 is my p. So my factored form for this trinomial is x plus 3, x plus 4. If I was to distribute this out, x times x is x squared, x times 4 is 4x, four 3 times x is 3x, 4x plus 3x gives me that 7x, and 3 times 4 is 12. This trinomial has been perfectly factored. If the c value is negative 12, well that is going to mean that one of my values is going to be negative. I don't know which one, but I know that when I add them up, they have to add up to get a positive 4. Now, if two numbers are going to multiply to get negative 12, one of them is negative and one of them is positive, the one that is positive should be the greater number because when I do the sum, I need to be left with a positive 4. Factors of 12 do not change. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. If one of them was negative, a 1 or a 12, I would never be able to add up to get 4. 2 and 6. If the 2 was negative and the 6 was positive, they would add up to get a positive 4. 3 and 4, if I made one of them negative and positive, I would never get a 4 out of. So 2 and 6 is the result. I need a negative 2 and a positive 6. A negative 2 and a positive 6 will add up to get 4, and they will multiply to get that negative 12. If I made it a positive 2 and a negative 6, and my signs were switched, they would end up adding up to a negative 4, which is not what I need. Last one, multiply to get a 12, but add up to get a negative. The only way to multiply to get a positive and add up to get a negative is if both terms are negative. Factor pairs of 12 do not change, and the only factor pair that I can add up with both negatives and get a negative 13 is 1 and 12, negative 1 and negative 12, and that is my factored form. If I go back and I use my multiplication skills to distribute, like I did in this top problem here, I'd be able to prove that this trinomial is in, is in fact factored this way. Here are a bunch of practice problems. Don't feel overwhelmed by your screen, but you can follow along with me or write them down as we go and feel free, obviously, to pause. So I would look at my factor pairs of 1. Factor pairs of 1, the only way to get 1 is 1 times 1. What kind of 1s would add up to get 2. They would both be positive. So it's positive 1, positive 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Now, we know that when we multiply a binomial by itself, it really means that that binomial is being squared. So this is a great way to represent that solution. Factors of 10. 1 and 10, 2 and 5. The factor pair that multiplies to get 10, that would add up to get 7, is a positive 2 and a positive 5. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 plus 5 is 7. The other factor pair of 10 would be 1 and 10, and I definitely could not get a 7 out of a 1 and a 10. 
36, factor pairs of 36. 1 and 36? No. 2 and 18? Nope. 3 and 12? Nope. 4 and 9? Yes. 4 times 9 is 36. 4 plus 9 is 13. Sorry about that. <laughs> so my result is x plus 4, x plus 9. Next one, 18. I need to get a positive 9. 1 times 18, no. 2 times 9, no. 3 times 6, yes. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 plus 6 is 9. Now a negative 18. So once I see that the c value is negative, it means one of my terms needs to be negative. I need to get the sum of a positive 3. 1 times 18 will not work. 2 times 9 will also not get me a 3. 3 times 6. Now, we used 3 and 6 positive in the previous problem. But one of them needs to be negative so that when we add them up, we get a positive 3. If I make the 3 negative, x minus 3, and I make the 6 positive, then my result would be that these multiply to get negative 18, and they have a sum of positive 3. 20, negative, so I need one positive, one negative. It has to add up to one. Remember, there's really a one in front of that x. Will one times 20 get me a one? No. Two times 10? No. Four times five? Yes. What kind of four and what kind of five do I need so that they add up to give me positive one? A positive five and a negative four. Now. Order does not matter, by the way, guys. You can write x plus 2, x plus 5, or x plus 5, x plus 2. Same thing here. You could have these reversed. You could have x minus 4 first, and then x plus 5 second. That does not matter, but the signs matter. So the positive sign must go with the 5. The negative sign must go with the 4. 16. I need to fit, find the factor pair that gets me 6. 1 and 16? Nope. 2 and 8? Yes. One of them needs to be negative, so I get a positive 6, a positive 8, and a negative 2. Those two numbers add up to get 6. They multiply to get negative 16. Negative 21. I need a 4. 1 and 21? Nope. 3 and 7? Yes. I need a 3 and a 7. That will add up to get 4. So again, I'm thinking about my 3 and 7. Which one would need to be negative? The 3 would need to be negative. The 7 would have to be positive. That way, again, they add up to get 4 and multiply to get negative 21. x squared plus 4x plus 4. Factors of 4 are 1 and 4, 2 and 2. Only way to add up to get a positive 4 is if they were both 2s. And we saw from a previous problem that if I have x plus 2, x plus 2, that really means x plus 2 squared. Negative 13. The only way to multiply to get 13 is a 1 and a 13. I need them to add up to get a negative 12. Positive 13, negative 1. 13 and a negative 1 add up to get positive 12. They multiply to get negative 13. Now, 24 can be a tricky one. Factor pairs of 24 to get me negative 14. 1 and 24, no. 2 and 12, yes. What kind of 2 and what kind of 12 would I need so that they multiply to get a positive 24 and add up to get a negative 14? They would both have to be negative. Okay, they would have to be negative. So sometimes we can find that there's factor pairs that may deceive us a little bit or we may think that there's something else that may work. 2 to add up to a negative 3. The only way to get 2 is a 1 and a 2. To get a negative 3, they would both need to be negative. A negative 1 and a negative 2 add up to negative 3, and they multiply to get that positive 2. Only way to multiply to get 1 is 1 times 1. If they have to add up to get negative 2, they'll both be negative 1s, which we know, like we saw previously, really means x minus 1 squared. Factor pairs of 10 to get negative 15. 1 times 10, no. 2 times 5, 
No. Kind of stuck. This is a case where the factor pairs of 10 do not add up to negative 15. This is actually a trinomial that we consider prime. Prime would mean that that trinomial cannot be factored. I simply have to leave it in that form. 36. I need a negative 20. 1 times 36? Nope. 2 times 18? Yes. What kind of 2 and what kind of 18 would I need? So I add them up to get negative 20, and then they multiply to get a positive 36. If you said both negative, you're correct. Another 24. Now, this is the 24 problem that's really interesting based off the other 24 problem. To get negative 14, we only had one option. But look now, to get a negative 10. We chose a 12 and a 2 previously. Here, if I'm looking at factor pairs of 24 to get a negative 10, I would say 1 times 24, no. 2 times 12, yes. But the problem with 2 times 12 is that one of them, the 12, would have to be negative so that you get a negative 10. But a negative 12 and a positive 2 are not going to multiply to get a, a positive 24. Another factor pair of 24 is 4 times 6. If the 4 and the 6 are both negative, not only will they add up to get a negative 10, but they'll multiply to get that positive 24. So in this problem, there's a tricky factor pair of 2 and 12, and you may think it works, but it actually does not. 22. Factor pairs of 22. 1 and 22? Nope. 2 and 11? Yes. In order to get a negative 9 as the sum, the negative 11 would have to be the case. Negative 11, positive 2, add up to get negative 9. Negative 11 plus 2, multiply to get 22. Negative 22. Factor pairs of 14. 1 and 14? Yep. If they're both negative, they'll add up to negative 15. And if they're both negative, they will definitely multiply to get positive 14. x squared minus 2x minus 15, factor pairs of 15. 1 and 15, 2 and, I'm sorry, 3 and 5. That's the case. We need a negative 2. So which one we need to be negative? The 5. Factor pairs of negative 5, 1 and 5, which one we need to be negative, so they add up to get a negative 4, the 5. Negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, and if I multiply them, I get negative 5. Last row, guys, factor pairs of 6, 1 and 6 gets me 7, both positive, it's an easy one. Here is that tricky factor pair 24, and we saw it in this problem here. If they're both negative, they'll multiply to get the positive and add up to get the negative. Now, I need them to add up to get positive 10. So the only way to get them to be multiplied and get a positive and add to get a positive is if they're both positive. 12 and 2 would not work because you would need a negative 2. A negative 2 would end up meaning that this 24 would be negative. 6 to get 7, negative 7 would be a negative 1, negative 6. Again, those add up to get negative 7. They multiply to get 6. And now 15. 1 and 15, nope. 3 and 5 gets me 8. None of the factors of 15 will give me a sum of 9. The same way none of the factors of 10 gave me negative 15. So this is the last problem, and it is, in fact, prime, just like the previous one was up here.